Hello and welcome to the MCON. This is the 11th MCON, yet the second virtual MCON for the East Metal Public Library. Um, I am Mark Torres, came from the radio. I am going to be moderating this panel with two awesome people who were here last year and we time travel to this year. We have none other than James uh, Carter Cathcart. Hi. And Michelle Knotts. Hello. <laughs> And these guys need know. no introduction of what they are, what they do, because this what is the are. Pokemon. What am, what am I? <laughs> because this is the Pokemon Q and A panel. So, wow. let's just get right into it. So, how have you guys been since this year to last year? <laughs> okay. Uh, how, how you doing, Carter? How you doing? Good to see you. I'm good. The winter was just like I, it wasn't a bad winter weather-wise, but everybody was just panicked you know and so i was you know my work the script stuff like i sit on my butt and do all that stuff anyway so <laughs> it's not like my schedule really changed but it was kind of a solitary winter so i'm glad that things i mean the weather's been so great here for the last two weeks so i'm up and out and walking and running and all this kind of stuff even the police are friendly it's wonderful <laughs> and i remember this time last year we were in indiana we had gotten out there and on March 12th, which was the day before all you know what broke loose. And then we couldn't get back. They, they closed all the borders and we had a car and you, you know, it's Indiana to Ohio, to Pennsylvania, to Jersey, to New York. We couldn't go anywhere. They were, they were actually, you know. And then when I We're finally, stuck. in June, we came back and my uh, son and daughter live right by the GW Bridge. It, and they were making it sound like they were showing pictures on the news of all these police hanging out by the bridge. And I said, can we even drive back? And she said, are you nuts? Of course you can't, just do it. <laughs> so we came back and it was, it was all fine. And then things just got better. But those first few months, man, I guess, no, especially out there, when we got out there, Nobody had even seen what COVID-19 was about. They really haven't. And then while we were there, I feel like it was kind of a wave that we dragged along with us. So I, you know, anyway, <laughs> things are much better now and I'm feeling very good. Thank you. Yeah. What, what about you, Michelle? How, how have you been? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm still working from home. So, and I'm doing uh, Twitch stuff. I haven't been to a convention now in, like in person, I haven't been to a convention in a year and a half. So it's been an adjustment. It's been weird and different, but um, but I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay, and I I met so many awesome, wonderful people through my Twitch channel. So and some of them are here. Thank you so much for being here from the Knott's Berry Farm. Thank you, everybody. Yay! <laughs> so it's always good to see them. I usually stream on Friday, Saturday, Sunday because that's when conventions used to be. So um, I'm like, I just kind of like took that schedule. I'm like, well, okay, I'll just stream on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because I'm not really doing anything anyway. So <laughs> I just like go to the store once a week and, you know, and um, work, 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 work. It's weird because it's like, it seems like there's been a lot of work lately in the past year than there has like ever. <laughs> like everybody I talk to is like so super busy because like big studios like Funimation are outsourcing to littler studios and the littler studios are so busy and they're like, we need more directors from home and stuff. So it's been crazy, but it's been good. And we've been keeping the lights on. So that's that's a good thing. <laughs> like hey. we're paying bills, right? <laughs> Always good to pay those bills. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, just letting everybody know, this is a, a Q&A session. So there is a chat on the uh, screen. So you guys type in the questions. I will read them <laughs> as, as they come up. Um, so from last year to this year, everybody, especially for voice actors, I would have to say, they're more at home as opposed to going into the studio. And some voice actors were actually working at home to begin with. Do you find that this was a, uh, a next step in your voice acting careers to do that? Or is this just another day at the office? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go first, sir? Or? Oh, sure. Why not? Well, um, <laughs> uh, like I said, we were out in Indiana for four months and really couldn't do anything. But Iuno, which is the production company that handles Pokemon now, they actually sent out, like I had my laptop and they sent out a, a, a USB mic of all things and headphones that 
plug into the mic. And so I was up in the upper bedroom with like soundproofing things that I bought from Amazon and recording out there for a couple of months. And there was a month last year where Japan actually shut down. They stopped making any Pokemon at all. But the thing is with the episodes coming the way they come, I didn't even notice because they, they just kept appearing. And so I kept doing them and, you know, and uh, I think that recording remotely, um, I know, you know, Michelle, they, they have to, we have to send them the file because Wi-Fi is so like screwy, yeah. but also they have, so if you do four takes on something, um, then you have to record, you're recording the whole thing. So they pick out the take they want, then you send them the file, then they have to go through it again and <laughs> re-pick out the take. So it's, it's a lot of work for those guys, but uh, that was fun with me. I could hear like dogs barking on the <laughs> microphone. And, you know, it was great. Hey, good, good time. It was a change yeah, of place. Yeah, so <laughs> things are fine. What it's, about it's, you, Michelle? It's funny because like, I, I already had a whisper room because I was doing some like audio books and some like, independent games from home because like a lot of independent developers like who make independent games they don't they don't have a studio they either don't have a studio or you know they can't really afford to like get a studio in order to have everybody record so so I record from home and I remember like when this first all went down I don't know like maybe Carter was still getting the scripts but I didn't work for eight weeks so when this first started oh. I didn't work for eight weeks and I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> and there were no conventions. And I had like, I had like four or five conventions lined up coming in like April and May last year. And they all canceled like right at once. I kept getting emails from everybody and they're like, and they're like, oh, sorry, we have to cancel. Sorry, we have to cancel. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> so I was like freaking out because I didn't work for like, thankfully Ogatron like threw me a video game that I could do at home. I'm like, great, awesome, thanks. That, that's, that'll pay a couple bills. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so that's why i i that's why i went to twitch i'm just like forget it you know i'm just gonna just credit that's what credit cards are for right so i just <laughs> bought all of this equipment that i needed um for streaming and i started i started doing twitch at home and it's been awesome but so uh, yeah in order yeah they sent those microphones and i was just like no i'm not using this and i just bought a neumann i'm like forget it i don't right, you got a good right i wrote off everything so which is great for my taxes i barely owed anything because i just wrote everything off so I'm like yay <laughs> <laughs> so i just like i just like bought a neumann microphone and kevin the engineer he was like oh that's great thank you so <laughs> So I, I already had a whisper room and it was like, it was filled with foam and stuff. So filled with foam, what? filled with foam. I filled it with more foam and more foam. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's been pretty good. Not going except, except for my annoying neighbors sometimes. So knock on, knock on thick wood. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We already have a question in the chat. Um, do you have any tips for someone who wants to go into voice acting? So I would say, as, an, as a non-voice actor, don't because then you're taking jobs away from you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> what, 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 tell what? it like it is, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you get to, you should do all the work. Nobody does anybody else. That's that's how it should be. But in case you can't do everything, what, what should people? Uh, what would be your suggestion? <laughs> Go ahead. The most important word in voice acting is acting. So it's good to get uh, acting chops under. Uh, a lot of people are, are doing like classes online, which is great. Um, yay, Zoom, <laughs> you know? Zoom has helped everybody out so much, which has been awesome. So um, get a coach. I got a, I got a voice coach. I mean, I was a theater major like in college anyway. So I was already like going down that route. So, but I, cause I wanted to be a Broadway and I wanted to be a star, but like that didn't work out. So <laughs> I had to go to the next best thing. So. <laughs> but you were a news reporter, right? Well, I, yeah, it was weird. I, I, I was for a little bit. Well, I was a theater major. Then I studied radio and television broadcasting because like that didn't work out. So I worked at MSNBC. I worked at CBS and an NBC affiliate in Pennsylvania for a little bit. And then I worked at MSNBC in New Jersey. They're actually in Secaucus, New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> just talk to my dad, you know, he'll give you some coffee. Um, <laughs> so I worked at MSNBC for a little bit and um, I hated it. I, I hated news. I hated working in news and it was too depressing and too real. And I'm like, this isn't fun. So that was my transition into voiceover. So, <laughs> but I don't know. That doesn't answer the question. I would say get acting things. Carter, what's your 
advice how to get into voice acting? Well, I, I probably don't have, I can tell you what I did. Um, I'm a musician and in the eighties, I was, I had my own recording studio and I was working a lot with a whole bunch of different people. And one of the, the guys that I worked with, he was, he did the opening, the cartoon opening or the, the, the opening to the ABC weekend special, which used to be a, wow. a show on Saturday afternoons. And so they, um, I did the music package. So I did all the, you know, the different intros, different lengths and all that kind of stuff. And they said to me at the end that they, we're really sick of the voice of OG Readmore. And they <laughs> said that. And I went, sir. And then he said, they said, we, we really don't have any money, but would you be interested? And I have always done this sort of thing, just never had done it professionally. So I did the audition and I got it. So for four years, I was OG Readmore. And it was a blast because he was the spokescat for project literacy so all of a sudden I'd go into libraries and there'd be this big full-size OG read more and I would that would be me so from then I got an agent and then things started to get um really busy and then in 1997 uh one of the guys I was working with doing music with it was saying that you know they heard this there was this show coming over from Japan and the big news of the show was that there was a strobe effect in the first episode and some poor kid got an epilep had an epileptic fit over the stroke i said oh that that sounds fun and um but then you know i just started doing it i auditioned for gary oak and um i did not think that i would still be on the show 24 years later but here i am and it's great it's a blast so, so you tell me I can't believe, like when you told me you were LG Readmore, I was just like, what? Like, cause I used to watch that. So I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was so stoked. I was like, ah, I can't believe it's LG Readmore. And I told my mom and she was like freaking out. She's like, what? So well, did you think when you were a young Michelle that you were going to be working with OG Readmore? I, no, I had no idea. I had no, I had no clue. Well, it's just funny because I was working for Carter for like the longest time. And like, I didn't even know until like you said something at a convention. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like you didn't even tell me like when we just like hung out and I, I, I'd go watch Carter like, um, play at like uh like bars and restaurants and things like that and his band was playing and you were playing like like drums and That's right and you keyboard and stuff and yeah. like me and bill would go like bill rogers would go like we go and hang out and like you never told me that you never told me you were og read <laughs> well see well, now you know you have to lead with that from now on hi i'm og read more <laughs> hi, I'm well, I, I, the last time i we did a con or it was the one in evansville indiana if you remember so over a year ago yeah but, but some i was sitting there we were signing autographs and a, somebody came up to me with a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards <laughs> and said i want to videotape you throwing the cards off of the bridge because i was weevil and can you say this and i didn't remember what i had said so <laughs> i was weevil once again and that was a lot of fun i love doing that so I love that pe people know more about what I did than I do, which is really fun because I get to learn stuff. So we have another question from the chat. It says, uh, from Susan, uh, for Michelle, what has been your favorite game to play on Twitch? Oh, I wrote that. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should answer that in here or there. I, I wrote I wrote um, the original Zelda and Link's Awakening was really fun. I'm on a huge Zelda kick right now. The Legend of Zelda. I'm on like, I've been watching all of these like fan-made comics and animations and videos I, I, I don't know and i was a huge fan when i was when i was younger when when i was a kid um with zelda but uh yeah it, it's been fun to play them again so which has been pretty cool <laughs> I, my gotta... son loved zelda he would zelda, sing yeah. the song all like all day it wasn't in school <laughs> <He'd be upstairs laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> another chap uh, another question from the chat another chap and question uh from pat <laughs> Have either of you um, cosplayed as one of the characters you have voiced over? Have you ever cosplayed as any of the characters that you voiced over? Have you ever dressed up as OG Readmore? Did you ever wear the little did, did you ever, <gasps> Could you imagine you dress up as OG Readmore? <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. I think I would scare children out of their wits. You know? I mean, but I'm you just to need to wear the hat. Just wear the hat one day. Just, just wear, the, wear the, just hat. the hat. Just like the little sailor's hat. I, re I remember the, a con in Detroit and there was a whole line of kids. And um, th at that time I was doing Carnivine as well. So this kid was in front of me and he was dressed like Carnivine. He had the big 
head with all that kind of stuff. And there were thousands of people there and they were all waiting to get on the elevator to go back up to their room. So idiot me comes around. He couldn't see me until, you know, I was in front because he had that grill, you know, for a mouth. And I was <laughs> ah, I'm lying. And he started crying to his mom. And his mom gave me this dirty look, like not that I was carnivine, but that I was some lunatic <laughs> who was making weird noises and scaring their kid. So how could you? <laughs> But uh, what are you going to do? I do the best I can. That was probably a nutty convention. Right. Another question from the chat uh, from Musical Mike. Carter, I've listened to your music before on YouTube. Do you have a re uh, album that people can purchase? And if so, where? Um, Christmas Morning was a favorite, by the way. You have a Aww. fabulous voice. Oh, thank you so much. That's, that's, it's cool because Christmas Morning just won second prize in the uh, American, what was it? USA songwriting competition, which was great back at, So this Christmas, hopefully there'll be a lot of that playing. But I do, I was just writing Mike back because he was so, you're so nice. Thank you so much for the kind words. I have a few CDs out there. And of course the actual physical CD is, it's almost impossible to buy. Not, I have them, but nobody wants, they just want to download stuff. So there's one CD called, I Was Missing You. There's one CD called Do It Again, which was my arrangements of a bunch of Beach Boy tunes. And- uh, I think I had that one. <laughs> and there's one called I Do, which was a wedding song that I wrote. And, uh, but I say I Was Missing You has probably got the most original songs. Back and, my, my favorite is Backroads. Backroads is- Yeah, my that's on that, that's on I that. I love that song. Aww. Your song is so good. Carter, you need to like put this up on a website or something, sell your CDs. Yeah, put all your tracks on there and then people can listen to it and buy your CDs and then they'll have, bring them to you and the people can come to conventions and you can sign them with the, with the hat on. <laughs> I need to manage is what I need because- You need to manage it. You know, the, the, the script writing is great and I thank God every day that I do it, but it just eats up time like crazy. So I don't, re I mean, I play piano every day, I play guitar every day, I sing every day and you know, but I, to do what you're talking about, I just haven't had the chance to like set all that stuff up. So I should make that a, a priority though, so. Uh, so let's see, we have another question for that. There's so many questions in the chat. Uh, for both of you, have you ever voiced any character in a pilot of any series that, uh, that has, I guess has not come out yet? Is there something that you voice and it never made it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it never made it. So what was that experience like? When you when you do something, you, you're all into it. You do all your acting. You, you put all your heart and soul into it. And it never goes anywhere. What, what is that feeling like? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, as long as you get, <laughs> as long as you get paid, right? <laughs> uh, I, like, I like Michelle. Michelle, like, it's all about paying and getting the bills done. Very, very well done. That's what you're supposed to do. Keep the lights on. No. <laughs> there was a... a, a it actually came out and it got really popular. I think it was called Animals United. Um, and I did the the main character who was a, what's the name of the animals that look a little like weasels and they stand up on their hind legs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, groundhogs? No, something. There, uh, I'll, I'll think of it. But what happened? The prairie like, dogs? Prairie dogs? Mongoose? Mong <laughs> you, if so, you're getting closer. <laughs> But whatever it was, I did the voice. And then when it came out, they had erased everybody and put stars on they, in, in mm. Germany. They had like, you know, everybody that you've ever heard of got to do all the voices. And that was kind of a bummer, but it was a great movie. Meerkat, that's it. <laughs> Meerkat. Yay! Thank you, chat. Meerkat, oh, yay. Meerkat. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, they're supposed to do another one and, and uh, who, who knows? <laughs> All right, so I guess the obvious question from the chat is from Tanya. Uh, who is your favorite Pokemon? And Michelle, you can't say uh, Piplup. <gasps> what? <laughs> I say Piplup, but Piplup's my favorite. <laughs> How could I say anything else? Now there's like, there's this whole Piplup thing going on in Japan. Did you guys see it? Like, everything's about Piplup. It's really cool. Wow. It's because like the new, they're like re-releasing the Diamond and Pearl games. So now everything's about Piplup. There's like this big Piplup promotion going on. So there's like Piplup like dancing and getting getting his hair done and stuff. It's pretty cute. There's just somebody in like a huge Piplup, like, you, you know, those big costumes that they wear, like the big Pikachu and they're walking around like this. And then there's one wearing a, a Piplup and it's so cute. 
It's out there on the internet. You can find it. <laughs> you can Google it. But it's all biblical. I think a lot of Pokemon from the past are, are coming back for that reason, probably what yes. you're, you're saying to me, because you know nobody ever tells me anything. <laughs> but, uh, I love seeing Snorlax because I'm so into oh. his the way he lives life asleep. That's no, <laughs> that's that's what I the best life. To. And then of course I do the voice, but when I do the voice, they have to pitch it down like four whole steps because. So, so, you know, Snorlax, they, they got it way in the basement. So he's probably my favorite now. But you're Munchlax too, man. Your Munchlax is higher. I wish they could, I wish they would show more Munchlax because he's so funny. Munchlax. I love, I love Munchlax. Munchlax. <laughs> he's, he's the cool. best. But the whole thing. And then in, per, wait, oh no, Tur Turtwig turned into Grottle, turned into Torterra. Torterra, that's right. Yeah. Grottle, I feel sorry for Grottle. He, he really got the shaft. It's like he showed up for about a month and then like, he bye. evolved and it was like, bye. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I love Turtwig. He's Tur Turtwig's I never so it, cute. Right. Turtwig. That's right. Turtwig. It's actually He's Turtwig. So they Tur told me uh, oh. recently in the church. They said, excuse Wig. me. Um, and I went, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Pokemon has been going on for over 20 years. Where do you guys think? The, the show will end. Do you think it will end? Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, how, no, or, or how will it end? <laughs> like, I, if he captures them all, then what does he, he do? He goes to college. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ash gets married, has kids, and then they go off on their own journeys. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't. I think about this, you know, after 24 years, I do think about this from time to time. But I honestly, the way they're doing it, I don't know. They could just go on and I'd croak and they'd still be going <laughs> on. And, you know, I don't, I don't no, know. Never. Coming up with stuff and each region that they go to, the thing that amazes me is that they draw them completely different. Like the Alola region, Team Rocket looked positively possessed. I mean, if you've seen some of their expressions on their face, uh, and now it looks like somebody's just drawing it by hand, which I think is cool, you know, but uh, I don't think it's going to end, at least not anytime soon, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? That, that is the question. Who knows what the future, I mean, I'm sure you didn't think the show would last this long. Or, or did you? Like when you came in and when you got the job, were you like, man, this is, this is going to be my cash cow for the rest of my life. <laughs> this is going to be my Scooby-Doo. Or were you like, yeah, this is not going to last. This is Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so, I used to think, I mean, I, ne I never thought it would go anywhere this long. But I remember between season eight and season nine, when it went over to Taj Productions, I remember looking in season nine and going, oh man, this might really be something going on here. And that was after eight years. So um, I don't know. I, sometimes I think about it. I, I try not to think about it you know, <laughs> because I was in my early forties when it showed up. I, I think- You were there since the beginning. <laughs> right. 1997 and I think it started in 96 in Japan or maybe it was 97 and then got here in 98 whatever it was but back then they were a year uh ahead of us a whole year like 50 episodes oh, yeah, now yeah. we're just maybe I don't know I'm just guessing sometimes four episodes five episodes so ahead so um it's a it's a different thing you know so since it's, it's such a short turnaround now, I know that uh, James, you actually do the uh, the script writing for the for the English translation. How much more pressure is that on you to just get it done as opposed to before you had a little more leeway to work yeah. with what you think can be done, what I can change. But now it's like, all right, I gotta I gotta go. Do you have it down to a science where it's just you just open the book, you do it, next one. Uh, it's actually, even though what you're saying is true, it's actually the opposite. It's it's more it's it's slower now with the scheduling and um, I, and I to try to explain it would be just a total bore. So I don't know. But when we were doing that do art, I was doing two scripts a week, and that was a little bit much because I'm always trying to push. Like back when I, you know, season nine and 10, I could get away with murder, just like Mike Hegney would get away with murder with the scripts, double entendres and all that kind of stuff. But now that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, now there's like 14 people that review my script from four different countries. And there's 
they're very careful. You know, when I get away with something, usually <laughs> it's a double entendre joke like Bugs Bunny, but like the people reviewing me are so young. They don't <laughs> even know what I mean. So it's good. So hopefully I do that. And then hopefully out there, parents, if they're watching it, they'll, they'll get it and they'll go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. I know I do. Yeah, it's fun. All right, so another, another question from the chat, from Taya. Uh, what's your favorite Teen Rocket disguise? And why is it, why is it that no one can figure it out? <laughs> oh, find a fairy flower when they're like the Jamie Lee Curtis and right. training places or whatever. That was a great costume. Don't you and, know? Yeah. <laughs> and Ash is just like, hi, how are you? I don't know who you Let's are. Let's go find like, a fairy flower. <laughs> It's just silly, but they, I, I don't think there is a favorite costume. I think whatever Meowth wears is my favorite of all the costumes that they have because, you know, they have to like mess with it to make it fit on this little two foot tall talking, you know, cat. So he always looks great, but the mustaches and everything. They, I love the mustache. <laughs> they seem to have a lot of, I think the boss gives them a lot of money for costumes. <laughs> Oh, but you know, it was really funny. Yeah, when they, when they dressed up as like Serena Ash and uh, oh. uh, Meowth was Bonnie. That was oh. so funny. They're like, we train hard. <laughs> That's right. And when They're they're leaving, they're going, I'm Ash and I'm that. And then Meowth would I'm cute, cute little Bonnie. <laughs> really? Okay. So it was fun. It was fun though. They're like, you, your Pikachu can fly? <laughs> we train hard. <laughs> Floating, right, that was a great dressed episode. up as Pikachu. That was funny. That was really funny. <laughs> Another question from the chat from Tom Jackson says, what Disney villain or villains would you guys hang out with? What Disney, oh. What Disney villains would we, Maleficent. Oh, Male I, I love, let me, okay, let me tell you. I love the Kingdom Hearts series, like the video game and Whoever voices Maleficent in that, she's like, oh my God, I, she's amazing. I love her. I love her voice. Whoever like voices Maleficent is great. She's just really cool. Like, yeah, she's like super evil and stuff, but like, she's so like proper about it. She's very like, <laughs> she's regal and sophisticated. And she's like, what do you want? Oh. <laughs> I can go with that too, because there's so many of them though. It's really, you know. <laughs> hard to pick one i mean they've been at it for a long time but i'd say you you picked a good one michelle i'll Hello. go with it maleficent's super cool <laughs> so i know james you were a, you said you're a musician uh, michelle do you also sing uh, are you a musician as well a little bit. outside I play, I play a little bit of piano but not as good as carter <laughs> i can play chopsticks <laughs> So I, <laughs> I wanted to ask about the uh, the Pokemon uh, movie that was remade. You guys actually sang. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Oh, that was no, so fun. I want to know about that. How is that singing in character? Is that well, different than your actual voice? Because Well, because because it's funny because, like, Carter has perfect pitch, which is amazing to me, which is awesome. I've always been amazed by how, like, you know, he, he just, he, like, a microwave could beep, and he'd be like, oh, that's a C, that's a C sharp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, beep, beep. It's like, oh, that's an E flat, you know? He would like know what it was if a microwave beeped or something. I hopefully no. don't talk like that though, because you can <laughs> no. right in my head, you know. E flat. No. You no. did like all the parts and I you know did one of did one of them. So I just followed off of what you did, which is great. And I, I thank you and I appreciate that Aww. that you did that. <laughs> thank well you. the tune that you're talking about when we were in the boat in the water and it's flying. In the boat, yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't even try to sound like James. I just didn't want to sound like me. So I think what I ended up doing, because it was kind of operatic range, like Michelle, you were in the upper <laughs> stratosphere. That was great. So I just sang like this. Oh! You know. That, that's not James, but if you think about it, maybe it is James. You know, it, it, it sounded really good. It was great. It was so much fun. It was so it was much so fun. Much fun. <laughs> Except actually adapting that one though. That was CGI, right? Yes. The, the one that was CGI. It was so cool. They looked like Frozen characters. They looked like Elsa and Anna from like Frozen. I was like, oh, they look great. <laughs> they were so cool looking. I loved it. Well, the thing that got me was most of the movies and the TV, I'd say 90% of it 
they're just quacking. You know, just their mouths go whack, 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 whack. And occasionally you get an oh or something. And I always try to make it work. But the CGI movie, they pronounced everything and it was all in Japanese. So there's a lot of words that end in vowels that we don't end in vowels in, in America. So <laughs> it, was, it was a real challenge to, to, to get that one looking you know, acceptable. That was by far the hardest movie to write, no doubt. But it was still cool. Well, you did a great job. It, well, it was thanks. amazing. You did. Everybody awesome. looked great. I mean, it was great. Another chat. Another. Why do I keep on saying another chat from the question? <laughs> another question from the chat. <laughs> what is your favorite Pac-Man game? I think I know Michelle's answer. <laughs> I like. Well, back in the day, I liked Ms. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man was fun. So. <laughs> Because uh, they had you... the little stories, and I had to, I had to keep beating it so to see the end of the story. You know, they get married, and then they, well, they meet, and they get married, and then they have a little, little Pac baby. So, <laughs> did you ever watch the cartoon when they had the Pac Man cartoon? I did. <laughs> yes, we had. Oh my god, when we were kids, my brothers and I had like the Pac Man record. There was like a record, and and it was like, oh my god, it was like Pac Man's Christmas or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. They say like Christmas. It was. <laughs> What was like snowflakes and frozen lakes? Oh. Something I can't remember how it went, but it was it was like that. <laughs> and they had a dog, and they had a cat, a pack dog, and a pack a pack cat. It was it was awesome. <laughs> I'm afraid though, I haven't played Pac Man since. I had this handheld thing, and they just went. Oh my god! I, mean, I haven't played anything since. So you know. All right. So, all right. So another question from the chat. If you could be any Pokemon in real life, who would you choose? <laughs> Penguins are just awesome. <laughs> There's only one I would really like to be and I kind of am already because that's Meowth. He is a Pokemon, you know. But he gets away with murder. And I love, <laughs> like, when Pokemon Go first came out, and there were, like, you'd see eight, nine kids playing it. And they were all walking around in Manhattan and everywhere else, of course. So if I happened to be on the street and there'd be a group of them in front of me, I, I would <laughs> walk up to them and say, So did you catch me yet? <laughs> and they would turn around. And of course, they didn't think it was. They're like, Who's this crazy guy? Yeah, right. They thought I was nuts, but it still was really <laughs> their expressions and then i would leave so i wouldn't get arrested but <laughs> meowth is my favorite what about you michelle who would you be which uh, pokemon would you be in real life? Like i'm sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm partial to people is my favorite i'm sorry Aww. so we have less than five minutes to go so we want to do a oh, final thoughts it went too fast <laughs> it, it, it goes like it's like a blur it's a blur really um, so final thoughts. So I guess, uh, Michelle, do you have any final thoughts, any words of wisdom you want to impart on the audience here and people who's going to be listening to us on, uh, on the YouTube page when this gets uh, aired after it finishes this recording? Do you have any final thoughts? Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Support MCON and the East Meadow Public Library in New, in New York, in Long Island. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want, tune in. I, I don't mean to like do it, man. Do it. Promo. Oh, no. Promo. Oh, Join no. the Twitch. Join the Twitch. Come on. Where is Tune it? Tune in tonight to my Twitch channel at 8 p.m. when we're going to be celebrating my one-year Twitch anniversary. Oh. It's today. Can you believe Woo, it? One year. One year already. We're going to play Mario Kart. We're going to play Mario Party. We're going to play Mario Deluxe U, whatever it's called. Mario. It's going to be... It's Do you play fun. Pokemon uh, Snap on your on your Twitch? I don't have it yet. Um, <laughs> I didn't get it yet. I know it, it just came out like... It came out like last week and people like, I beat the game. I'm like, <laughs> you guys got to pace yourself. Stop beating the game in like two days. Jeez, enjoy it. You got to enjoy the game, you know? But I haven't I haven't gotten it yet because I, um, I wanted to get uh, Mario Kart and Mario, Mario Party so we can play with everybody and... It's going to be awesome and Mario and lots of Mario stuff. <laughs> All right, James, uh, final thoughts, any words of wisdom you want to well, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> well, I was going to earlier talk to whoever it was that asked about, you know, getting into voice acting. I, I, I didn't really get off on the, the thought, but what I did was after that, that OG Readmore thing, which just came through and I said, oh man, I got to do this. So I actually went to the library and just started getting books of humor and I, I just 
research for, I don't know, a couple of days. And I started whittling it down to like, what voice would I, what voice do I do when I'm out of my mind? And what would that voice like to say that was like 10, 15 seconds long? So I whittled that all down and ended up doing a two minute uh, demo tape. And then I went and um, even now they do it after and Screen Actors Guild and all that kind of stuff. They publish monthly booklets that show agents of pretty much everybody that's in the biz. And I just started sending it out and um, it ended up you know, working out really well. So the thing is, as much as it seems crazy out there, which it is, if you really do, I think if you handle it methodically so you know what you like to sound like and what you want to say, you can get in. I'm telling you, you can get in and do this stuff. If I can do it, hey, hey, you know. You can do it. <laughs> and that's my wisdom. <laughs> Um, so my final thought is this, um, we, we've, we've barely touched upon it. I think uh, you guys can actually go check out um, our YouTube page that came from the radio for last year's uh, Q&A with the Pokemon cast. Um, we, we hit upon this about voice acting and acting. It's acting first, then comes the, the different voices. If you know how to act and emote and, and show with just your voice, you're more likely to get the job and then you can do the wacky voices afterwards because it's not only just wacky voices. It is the acting and i think that's an important part of voice acting is they should stress the acting part uh -huh. well i think i did pretty good because when i was little and i wasn't sick but i didn't want to go to school i did a really good job of convincing my mom that i was on my deathbed so that was <laughs> acting so you know, <laughs> so, you know you're right acting is first and foremost because it's, if, it's weird if it, you don't see the actual person doing it so you really have to emote acting in, a, in, in a, a believable way and if you guys weren't such great actors this wouldn't be so good so long so long lasting so i want to say thank you so much for your hard work your dedication and your performances in bringing all this to us um so i think we are out of time so thank you very much from the east Thanks, Public Mark. library oh Thanks my pleasure Mark and jude and kelly thank you <laughs> yes, so much yes yes so make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and make sure you go to www.eastmetal.info for more free programs. They have tons of stuff every single day. Make sure you go to that website, support the East Metal Public Library, and keep on watching Pokemon. Thank you Yay! very much. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>